Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Epigastric hernia repair laparoscopic. Introduction. Hernias happen when tissue in the body pushes through a weak spot in the muscle wall of the abdomen. An epigastric hernia happens between the chest and belly button. Hernias can be dangerous. Surgery is the only way to correct an epigastric hernia. If your healthcare provider has recommended an epigastric hernia repair, the decision whether or not to have the procedure is yours. This program explains a laparoscopic epigastric hernia repair. It covers reasons why this surgery is needed, risks of the surgery, and what to expect before, during, and after the procedure. The abdomen. The stomach and intestines are organs that are inside of the abdomen. They help digest and absorb the food we eat. The stomach and intestines are covered and protected by three layers. The first layer is a thin membrane called the peritoneum. The second layer is a wall made of many muscles and fibrous tissue. The third and last layer is the skin. Symptoms and Causes If the muscles of the abdomen become weak, organs and tissues in the abdomen can push through the weak spot. This includes the intestines or fatty tissue and the first covering or peritoneum. If organs and tissues in the abdomen push through a weak spot, it causes a bulge under the skin. This is called a hernia. There are many different types of hernias. This program explains the treatment of epigastric hernias. Epigastric hernias affect the middle of the abdomen. They happen between the bottom of the rib cage and the belly button. An epigastric hernia happens because of a defect or weakness in the abdominal muscles. The weakness in the muscles could be the result of lifting heavy objects. It could also be caused by aging. Sometimes an epigastric hernia happens when a baby is developing in the womb. This can happen when the tissue and muscles in the baby's abdomen do not close completely during development. In most cases, epigastric hernias are small, but sometimes a person can have multiple epigastric hernias at one time. Hernias can be dangerous. Some of the structures inside the abdomen, such as the intestines, can get stuck or twisted inside the hernia. This is called a strangulated hernia. With strangulated hernias, the blood supply to the organ or tissue inside the hernia is cut off. This type of hernia could lead to death of the organ or tissue. This may require a riskier operation. The risk of strangulation with an epigastric hernia is low, but it can still happen. Hernias also tend to get larger over time. They do not heal on their own. Surgery is the only way to correct the problem. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. What to expect before surgery? You will need to stop drinking or eating the night before surgery. Ask your healthcare provider for more detailed instructions. Tell your healthcare provider about any medicines you are taking. These include prescription medicines, over the counter medicines, and supplements. You may need to stop taking some medicines before your surgery. You should take a shower the night before or the morning of the operation. Make sure you arrange for someone to take you home after the surgery. You will not be able to drive right away. Laparoscopic Epigastric Hernia Repair A laparoscopic hernia repair is done under general anesthesia. This means you will not be awake and will not remember the procedure. During the surgery, your heart rate and other vital signs will be watched closely. The procedure will take about one hour or longer. A laparoscopic hernia repair is done using multiple small incisions. 
Special instruments, called scopes, are inserted into these incisions to help the surgeon perform the repair. Once the incisions are made, a special gas is used to inflate the abdomen. The scopes are then inserted. The surgeon pushes the intestines, fatty tissue, and peritoneum back into the abdomen. Next, the muscle wall is strengthened using stitches to hold it together. Your surgeon may decide to place a synthetic mesh to cover the defect. The surgeon then closes the incisions. In some rare cases, a surgeon may need to switch to an open surgery. An open surgery is done with one large incision over the hernia. This is usually done if the surgeon thinks the open surgery is safer for the patient. Risks and Complications This surgery is safe, but there are several possible complications. These are unlikely, but they are possible. You need to know about them just in case they happen. You may be able to help your healthcare provider detect complications early. The risks and complications of epigastric hernia repair include those related to anesthesia and those related to any type of surgery. Risks of general anesthesia include cut lips and chipped teeth, headache, nausea or vomiting, problems urinating, sore throat. More serious risks of general anesthesia include heart attacks, lung infections, strokes. Your anesthesiologist will discuss these risks with you and ask if you are allergic to certain medications. Blood clots in the legs can happen due to inactivity during and after surgery. These usually show up a few days after surgery. They cause the leg to swell and hurt. Blood clots can become dislodged from the leg and go to the lungs. There, they can cause shortness of breath, chest pain, and possibly death. Let your healthcare provider know right away if you have symptoms of a blood clot. Sometimes shortness of breath can happen without warning. Getting out of bed shortly after surgery may help decrease the risk of blood clots in the legs. Some of the risks are seen in any type of surgery. These include infection, which may be at the skin level or deeper, bleeding, either during or after the operation, skin scars, other risks and complications are related specifically to this surgery. These are rare, but it is important to know about them. Structures in the abdomen could be damaged. These structures include the female reproductive organs, the intestines, the kidneys, urinary bladder, or connecting tubes. Damage to internal organs could cause permanent problems and lead to additional surgeries. These are rare. If a mesh was placed during the surgery and you develop an infection, the mesh may need to be removed. This involves another surgery. Blood vessels or nerves in the abdomen could be damaged. The hernia could also happen again. This may require additional surgeries. What to expect after surgery? After the operation is done, you will be moved to the recovery room. Your heart rate and other vital signs will be watched closely. You may then go home or stay in the healthcare facility for a few days. Most patients are able to go home the same day as the surgery. You can expect some soreness in your abdomen. This usually lasts for a few days after surgery. You may be given medication to help ease any pain or discomfort. Ask your healthcare provider when you can return to your regular activities. To prevent the hernia from coming back, no heavy lifting, bending, or twisting is allowed for a few weeks. You will be told how to care for your incisions before you go home. Make sure to schedule a follow-up appointment to see your surgeon in a few weeks. Contact your healthcare provider right away if you experience any of the following signs of infection. A fever of 101 degrees Fahrenheit, 38.3 Celsius or higher. Pus or blood from any incisions. Redness or swelling around any incisions. You should also contact your healthcare provider right away if you have nausea or vomiting that does not improve, pain that is not relieved by medications, shortness of breath. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary
Hernias happen when tissue in the body pushes through a weak spot in the muscle wall of the abdomen. An epigastric hernia happens between the chest and belly button. Hernias can be dangerous. Surgery is the only way to correct an epigastric hernia. If your healthcare provider has recommended an epigastric hernia repair, the decision whether or not to have the procedure is yours. A laparoscopic hernia repair is done using multiple small incisions. Special instruments called scopes are inserted into these incisions to help the surgeon perform the repair. Once the incisions are made, a special gas is used to inflate the abdomen. The scopes are then inserted. The surgeon pushes the intestines, fatty tissue, and peritoneum back into the abdomen. Laparoscopic epigastric hernia repair is safe, but there are several possible complications. Contact your healthcare provider right away if you experience a fever of 101 degrees Fahrenheit, 38.3 Celsius or higher, pus or blood from any incisions, redness or swelling around any incisions. You should also contact your healthcare provider right away if you have nausea or vomiting that does not improve, pain that is not relieved by medications, shortness of breath. You will be told how to care for your incisions before you go home after surgery. Make sure to schedule a follow-up appointment to see your surgeon in a few weeks. Thank you for using Explain.